from drawing with us here with another round of cartooning sessions for Muni Valley Libraries. All right, let's get started. Today, to start off our cartooning session, I'd like to talk about anthropomorphism. That's a pretty long word, but what it means is to assign human characteristics to something that is not human, usually an inanimate object. What does that mean? Well, that means if you take an object and assign something human to it, that's anthropomorphism, something that, so basically making your object look a little bit more human. So let's say I have an apple and I want to assign some human characteristics to it. I can give it a human face, perhaps. So I can give it eyes and a mouth. And there we go. I've made the apple a little bit more human. And as you can see, it looks like a cartoon apple right now. So, assigning human characteristics to a non-human object. And it doesn't have to be a face. It doesn't have to have the mouth. Even if it's just the eyes, as you can see, it starts looking like a cartoon apple. It doesn't have to be anything in particular as well. So, for example, I can draw another apple. But instead of giving it eyes, I might give it legs. Like that looks a little bit weird but that works as well what also might work is I can have an apple and I can decide to give it hands as you can see I don't have to draw these really well but immediately when I have added something a little bit more human to this inanimate object you get to see that it grows a bit of personality and you can start thinking of it as uh, more than just an apple and something that's a little bit more like us, a little bit more human. And of course, you can combine all these. So I can draw my apple over here and my apple can have eyes and mouth and hands and feet. And slowly but surely, you can get more human characteristics out of an everyday object. So you can try this out. It can be as simple as like a little block. You can add some eyes to it and a mouth. A little feet over here. I don't know. Maybe not a block. Maybe it could be... You know, something like a sponge. Give it a little tie and some square pants. And a kind of goofy face and stuff like that. So, it's very easy to add human characteristics to non-human objects. So as an example, um, you can take a bunny. So they can actually be living objects, like other kinds of creatures. You can take a, uh, take a bunny, and you can draw a bunny like a bunny. Or you can take this bunny and you can make it stand up like a human. Now, bunnies don't actually stand up like this and bunnies aren't really this shape. But this is basically anth anthropomorphism, drawing something and giving it more human characteristics. In fact, you can take that bunny's face and you can give it more expression. Now, bunnies obviously don't have the same kind of muscles that we humans have. We humans have a lot more muscles in our face than a lot of other animals. And that's what allows us to do a lot of expressions that a lot of other animals can't do. But once you start giving 
other animals these human expressions, as you can see, you get a really cartoony bunny. Like maybe your bunny has a fairly long neck, which bunnies don't usually have necks which are that long. And you can actually give your bunny human hands as well. So bunny hands aren't like that at all, but this is anthropomorphism. So give this a try. Just try drawing an object or some sort of animal and give it these human qualities and that is basically anthropomorphism. Bunnies don't have eyebrows either but as you can see over here I can give this bunny some eyebrows and the more I add the less it's a bunny and the more human it becomes. So how do we start how do we start off? Well start off with simple objects like an apple or a banana. Just think of an object that you can give human characteristics. This banana over here. We will give this banana some eyes and a mouth over here. And We'll give it these arms and these legs. And you can you can decide for yourself how much detail you want to put. If you want to just leave it like that, that is fine. Uh, if you want to put a little bit more detail, maybe this banana can have some gloves. Over here. And maybe you can give this banana some shoes as well. There you go. And you can look for all sorts of objects around your house to see what you can give these human qualities. And you'll find different objects will very naturally take on different qualities depending on the shape of the object. So as an example, if I drew an alarm clock over here, so two bells up here, this, this alarm clock As you can see there, we can use the hands of the clock to be a moustache. It's already got a very different personality to the banana. Because of its shape and its design. Yeah. As you can see, the banana looks a little bit more sleek and stylish because of its nice shape. And the clock has this very much barrel shape. So you can look around your house for different objects and think about what kind of personalities these objects have. So for example, uh, a brick. If you found a brick and you gave human qualities to a brick, you'll tend to end up with something with a little bit of a different personality to your clock or your banana. As you can see a brick, a brick being being very tough uh, and very sturdy, your brick character will be much more likely to be a tough character and maybe a character that's very strong and sturdy. Uh, on the other hand, you might have something like 
a bottle and there are many different kinds of bottles so you might have a bottle that looks something like this as you can see that's a very curvy figure so your bottle might be a character that's a little bit more stylish give it some eyelashes over here there we go or you might have uh, something like oops, a toaster and you can start looking for parts of the object that look like a mouth or eyes and you'll find that we humans we're very good at finding eyes and mouths on random objects so we humans are very good at finding ourselves in things we're very good at looking at objects and actually finding faces in them. So like for example an electrical socket. You can very quickly see that ah, kind of looks like there's a little face there. There we go. All I have to do is add some little round bits there. And that's my anthropomorphized electrical socket. Don't play with electrical sockets though, you'll get zapped. This is a zap. So find objects, find different shaped objects, and try just adding some eyes to them. Add it uh, add some hands, add some feet to them, and see what and see what you can come up with. There'll be a lot of uh, uh, there'll be a lot of interesting objects which you act, you can actually turn into cartoon characters. So, for example, and for another example, you can draw a chair. And the chair already has parts which look like legs. I probably don't need to draw legs on this chair, but I can draw some arms over here. And there we go. And it's pretty fun to look around and draw different objects with different faces on them. Now, there is something else that we can do besides anthropomorphism. We can do the opposite, which is chromomorphism. Now, chromomorphism is where you take a human and you give it attributes like an object. So you make, well, anthropomorphism is where you make uh, an object look like a human, look more like a human. Chromomorphism is where you make a human look more like an object. Uh, how do we do that? We start off with perhaps a human face. So let's say I just draw a person's face. Like that. Let's draw this bald guy. Now, I might decide to make him look more like a brick which means I'll make him look more squarish and everything will be a lot more ang angled 
And as you can see, I'm basically making this person look like a brick. Everything is like this squarish brick shape. And there we go. So, on the other hand, I may not want to make him look like a brick. Uh, maybe I want to make him look a little bit more like a banana. So, I can give his face more of this banana-like look by making everything curved the same way a banana is curved. So uh, as you can see over here, give him this long banana chin. And oh, well, if I draw his head like this, human heads don't really look like that. But I can draw his hair looking like that. So I can give him hair that looks a little bit like a banana shape. So this is another thing that you can try out. So feel free to try doing some drawings of people and just think of an object that they can go with. Uh, be they <laughs> bricks or bananas or other things. So you've heard of uh, giving an hourglass figure to a person. Well, we can do that at, with uh, people. So if I wanted to draw like a lady with an hourglass figure, however I draw my lady, I just make her body look a little bit like an hourglass. So I can give her some arms over here like this. And over here, I can give her one of those dresses that basically makes her body look like an hourglass. Like that. So there are a lot of other things that you can do. You might have uh, heard that there are designs of dresses that are called mermaid dresses. Now the mermaid dresses are so called because they make your character's body look a little bit like a mermaid. So at the top we can do again something like an hourglass design over here and the bottom of the dress we're going to make the bottom of the dress look like a fish. So the bottom of the dress is going to look a little bit like a fish. Like that. So I'm going to put some waves on the bottom of here. And have my dress like that. So this dress is known in some circles as a mermaid dress. Whether you want to put the scales on there is another, it's another thing. But there we go. So we have anthropomorphism, making your character an object that has human qualities. And we have chromomorphism, making a person uh, a human that has qualities like an object. Someone who might look like a banana face, uh, a girl who might look like a fish. And there are many other things that you can do to create interesting characters. You can draw cars. That have... eyeballs. As you can see that that immediately makes this car look a lot more human.
Some people like to put the eyeballs up here on the on the windscreen. That works. Or you can put the eyeballs on the lights. Or you can make the car transform into a robot. That is also a form of anthropomorphism. And you'll find it is surprisingly common for people to make their human characters look more like animals. So for example, a lot of, char uh, a lot of people like to draw their human characters with things like cat ears, for example. Cat ears, dog ears. And you can have your character wear gloves. They are like cat paws, for example. Lots of things that you can do. So these are just a few ideas that you can play with for today's cartooning session. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us today. This has been a presentation for Mooney Valley Libraries, and you've been drawing with us. Thank you.